Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, workshop by me, John Crespo, Lead Solutions Engineer uh, at Bot Zero, leading the solution engineering team at APAC. Uh, so before we start, just make this a little bit bigger. Perfect. So before that, maybe let's make sure that everyone can hear me correctly. So can you maybe give me a thumbs up on the chat if everyone can hear me, you can see my screen correctly. Excellent. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for that. All right, let's start uh, with our workshop then. So again, thanks for joining, guys. My name is John Crespo. Everyone calls me JC. Um, I'm the lead, of, the lead solutions engineer for the APAC region here at Old Zero. And today I'm gonna be talking about how what is Old Zero, and I'm gonna be giving you a little demonstration as to how um, you can uh, include authentication in your bespoke apps and also secure your APIs, as well as using uh, actions, uh, which is our new feature, very exciting um, days ahead and also Auth0 actions with no code. So what does that mean as well, right? So first and foremost, um, what is Auth0, right? So Auth0 is a modern way to solve customer identity, right? So just as AWS is to infrastructure and Stripe is to payments, Auth0 is to customer identity. So that means if you're building a bespoke, bespoke app uh, or a mobile app or anything like that, um, Otsiro provides a platform to authenticate, authorize, and secure access for these application devices and users, right? So Otsiro was founded by the folks who literally wrote the book on claims-based identity and access control while working with Microsoft in the early uh, 2010s. So since launching in 2013, um, Otsiro has helped more than 9,000 customers vastly simplify the complexity of enterprise identity. And today, our team of more than 1,000 employees supports these uh, 9,000 plus customers who have more than 4 billion logins per month uh, by providing them with support throughout the world as we have offices in Seattle, uh, London, Sydney, Tokyo, and Buenos Aires, All right? Um, so look, by safeguarding billions of logins transactions each month, Otsio delivers the right balance between user convenience privacy and security, right? So customers can focus on innovation. You can focus on building uh, cool features for your applications, right? So let's say from improving customer experience through the seamless single sign-on to making MFA or multi-factor authentication as easy as a click of a button. And because your company is unique, you will need an extensible identity solution that adapts to your needs for today and for the future as well. So you can see the old zero platform as a highly customizable identity operating system that is as, as simple as development teams want and as flexible as they need as well. So this is the best way to see it. So also we have multiple deployment options like that provide operational flexibility and appropriate performance for your applications. So our unique approach enables our customers to deploy either within uh, Otsiro's public cloud or a private instance hosted by Otsiro just for our customers, right? And um, yeah, and we ensure that our customers can scale as they need um, as our platform is built for extreme resilience as evident by our grading that 99.99% SLS. So I think, um, I hope that gives you a overall overview, high level overview of what Otsiro is, who we are. And uh, without further, um, comments, I think uh, it's time for a demonstration. So let's get hands on the keyboard. So what am I gonna do today? So this is a to-do list of the things I'm gonna be showing you today. So the first thing we'll have to do is to create an application. I'm gonna be using a quick start for this. It's pretty much a React application with a simple backend. Then I'm gonna be showing you how you can customize that login screen that Alt Zero is gonna show you, you know, for you to capture the credentials of your users in the most secure manner. Then uh, we're gonna be looking at how can I secure an API based not only on JOTs or, or JWT tokens, but also based on user roles, right? So we're gonna uh, be talking about role-based access control as well. And then last but not least, we'll be touching on actions. So I'm gonna be uh, writing some custom actions to for you know enriching the token with extra claims. 
to make access control decisions on the, at the application level, uh, maybe as well to, you know, to do some contextual multi-factor authentication. Uh, and at the end, we'll talk about the no-code actions, right? So we're gonna be integrating with uh, AWS SNS as our SMS provider, okay? So just to give you like a um, visual representation of how Altero works in, inside, right? Inside the engine. So today we're gonna be uh, talking about a client, which is gonna be our application. When the user attempts to authenticate, we're gonna be seeing how Altero is gonna redirect us to our authorization server to capture the credentials in a more secure manner. We call that the universal login experience. Then I'll show you how you can create the users in a user database in Altero. And then once the user has authenticated, we have the access and ID tokens uh, ready to go. But before that, I would like to um, create some actions that are gonna do you know, different things uh, as well. And ultimately, this is gonna lead to us or the user being able to access this resource server, right? And based on the role as, as well, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna jump to my browser in here. That as a developer, if you wanna start from scratch, the first thing you will have to do is to go to altzero.com, click, click on the sign up button. This is gonna redirect you to this page. You can create an account free of charge that will give you a free tenant with up to 21 days of free enterprise capabilities, right? Uh, so after you do that, you will be landing on this page. And this is the tenant creation page. So just for context, a tenant, it's an isolated unit in Old Zero's public cloud where all your data and configuration is gonna be living in, yeah? So all you need to do is to give your tenant a name and uh, choose the region of your preference. Where do you want your configuration and, and your data uh, to be living in? In Australia, Europe, and Japan, depending on if you have to comply with, with regulations and stuff like that. I have created in Australia for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So for the purpose of time, of, uh, I'm just conscious of time, we only have one hour. So uh, I have created a tenant for this session already. And this is how it looks like at the really, really beginning of your Auth0 journey, right? So the first thing I need to do um, in order to um, integrate Auth0 with an application, I need an application, right? So let's go ahead and click on applications in here. And then I can go ahead and click on create application. So Auth0 supports a wide range um, uh, of application types, right? So we, depending on what you're building, if you're building a mobile app or a single page web application using React or Angular, you will select this as your choice. Uh, also, if you're using more traditional stacks such as ASP.NET or Java or something like that, you'll select this and so on, right? So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna be calling this API Days uh, app. And then I'm gonna be selecting a single page web application. Once I click on create, Old Zero is gonna ask me, what technology are you using for your web app, right? So Old Zero um, supports over 65 or provides over 65 ready to use quick starts and SDKs that can be integrated with whatever tech stack you're using. For today, I'm gonna be using React. So once I click on React, uh, Old Zero is gonna give me a couple of options, right? On the right hand side, uh, we have pre-built a little sample project pre-configured with the settings relevant to this tenant. Um, so all you need to do is to download that sample, um, run it and install dependencies, run it, deploy it, whatever you want, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do, be doing today. We're gonna go ahead and download this sample. So now, going back to that diagram I showed you, uh, all, all, um, my application is gonna redirect me to Auth0, uh, AKA my authorization server, uh, to capture the credentials in a more secure manner. So since th this is a redirect flow, we need to tell the application, or Alt Zero in this case, where do you need me to redirect the user back to once the authentication is uh, complete? So I'm just gonna go ahead and redirect to my local host 3000. I'm just gonna copy this because I need this for, for later on. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and download this sample, right? Simple as that, I'm just gonna go ahead and open this. And let me just bring my console in here. I'm gonna drop this in here. Perfect, I'm just gonna open that one. And then I'm gonna open my Visual Studio Code. Perfect. So this is how the project looks like at the beginning. So, so you can see I was playing with it before. So these are some of the components and also I have my API server in here, uh, which is pretty much um, Express, uh, 
server, like with, with my routes and APIs as well. And then I have my Auth0 config.json that I'm gonna be talking about very soon. So it's a very simple project. So what I'm gonna do is to go ahead and npm install to install the dependencies. And while this is installing, so I'm gonna go back to my uh, tenant and then um, enable the settings in here, set up these settings, right? So the first thing I need to do, well, before that, if you have an already existing application on the left-hand side in here, Auth0 gives you a set of instructions you can follow in order to integrate that existing application with Auth0 already, right? So configure your application keys, in this case, domain or the client ID. The domain is the, the address for your authorization server, and then the callback URLs and so on and so forth. The cool thing about this documentation as well, just would like to call out this now, is the fact that uh, Auth0 is gonna give you the SDK um, appropriate SDK for this particular tech stack you're choosing. In this case, we're using Auth0 React SDK. And another cool thing is that all of this configuration is already pre-filled for you in the code. So all you need to do is to copy paste in your code base and you are ready to go, right? So, all right. So the next thing I would like to do is to go to settings and then um, I will have to go and scroll down in here and specify the logout the allowed callback URLs, the logout URL, and also the web origin, right? Once I have that out of the way, I just need to click on save changes. And because we are cool and we are fully customizable, so I'm just gonna bring up this little um, logo in here. So this is just the API days logo, just for me to identify that application. Um, save changes, well, maybe this is, Let's not do that, um, just make sure that nothing breaks. Perfect, this has been saved. And with that in mind, all I need to do then is to go ahead and uh, npm run dev, just to make sure that this app is up and running. Uh, starting the development server, starting the API as well as the, the client. So it's gonna take uh, bits. And just to make sure guys that um, you know all your questions are gonna be addressed, just please feel free to talk all your questions on the chat. And then at the end, uh, we're gonna open up the Q&A section and then I'm gonna be going through them, each, each one of them and address those, right? So as you can see here, this is the quick start that uh, Auth0 gave me. And once I click on login, uh, I should be redirected to Auth0 for authentication and uh, authorization as well, right? So now look, at the beginning, I'm seeing this is the, the, the universal login experience. So this is the universal login page, is the default universal login page. Um, this login in the box, login box in the middle you see here is what we call the lock widget, right? All of this is fully customizable. So what I'm gonna do just, um, just to show you how you can uh, customize this login page uh, very nice and easily and quickly, you can go back to your tenant and go to branding and click on universal login. And I have a really nice logo in here that I would like my log widget to, to show, right? So if I scroll down in here, you have company logo, primary color. There are other more advanced uh, customization options, but just out of the scope for this particular demo, right? Just don't wanna run out of time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on save changes. And then once I go back, and click on login again, I can see that, you know, that log widget changed the look and feel like actually just changed the logo, right? But you, you get the idea. Um, all right, cool. With that in mind, now, um, obviously, Auth0 is an identity platform, right? It's a customer and uh, customer identity and access and access management platform. So I need someone to, to, to be authenticated, right? So I need to create a user. So if let's go ahead and create a user in Auth0. So before that, I would like to talk about the different authentication options. So in Auth0, we abstract applications from connections so you can mix and match forms of authentications as required by your customers or your application or even your business, right? What does that mean? We have different authentication types. Uh, we have database connections, which is pretty much like a username repository, username and password repository living in Auth0. You can have as many as you want in case you wanna segregate users by department or by um, development team or whatever you, you need to do, right? Auth0 has created a database connection for me already by default username and password authentication. And that's the connection this application I'm using uh, is using as well, right? 
So we, we also have social connections, which you can enable you to use your social providers, such as Google, Facebook, GitHub, LinkedIn, you name it. Also passwordless connections uh, to receive an OTP by SMS and so on and so forth. But today, I'm gonna be focusing on the database connections, right? With that in mind, then I can go back to my dashboard again and go and click on user management and click users. This is where I'm gonna go ahead and create a user. So as the email, I'm just gonna choose my uh, email in here. And just to make things simple, I'm just gonna use the same email as the password. Um, and I need to choose the connection, uh, which is uh, what I told you before, this database connection. That's where the, these credentials are gonna be living in, in that particular connection. And after I do that, uh, Auth0 has built a whole user profile for that particular user with you know standard attributes you would expect to see in a user's profile, just such as name, email, or what was the last time this, this uh, person signed in or when this, this person sign up. Also, you can store up to 16 megabytes of extra profile information in the user's profile, and we call that metadata. But I won't be talking about this. Um, it's out of the scope for this demonstration, but it's just bear, bear in mind that this is a very cool feature as well. Uh, okay, cool. So after I create the user, I'm gonna go ahead and authenticate with that user, right? So let's try that. Once I click on login, I uh, just need to accept this consent in here. And as you can see here, I have um, been authenticated um, already with my application using Auth0, okay? So next thing I would like to show you is how can I call an external API and how can I secure that API with Auth0? So once I click on this external API that comes out of the box with this quick start, I come across this message saying, you can't call the API at the moment because your application does not have any configuration for audience, or it is using the default value uh, of your API identifier, right? So what does that mean? What does audience mean, right? So based on OpenID Connect specifications, an audience is part of an ID token, right? It's part of a token. So specifically an audience means the recipient for which the job is intended, right? So if we go back to my, to my uh, diagram in here is, this application is gonna, this user is gonna authenticate with this application. Auth0 is gonna give you a job with a, cert, with a certain um, set of scopes, right? And uh, these scopes are gonna determine what you can access in an API. And the audience is gonna determine which API you wanna access, which ultimately in this diagram, um, it's, it's, it's the resource server in here, right? So this is ultimately my audience, right? So since that is my audience, I need to create an API, right? And for that, let's go ahead and create an API in Auth0. So let's go to Applications, uh, APIs, and here is where you can create your new API. So once you click on Create an API, you get this API a name. Let's call this um, uh, My API. Let's keep it simple. Here I'm gonna be giving an identifier and just bear in mind that this is only a logical identifier for this API, right? Uh, Auth0 will not call your API at all. So this is just a way to, to identify that API. So HTTP, uh, S, let's keep this simple and call this my example, uh, my API dot example, for example, right? Let's keep this, let's copy this. Then we're gonna go ahead and create this API. Next, uh, Auth0, again, gives you a quick start in case you wanna try that API out uh, using different languages like Node.js, PHP, and so forth. Uh, but what I really wanna do here is to go to the settings and then go ahead and copy this identifier because this is gonna be the audience for, for, um, for my configuration, right? The, the API I'm gonna be calling. Let me get rid of this bar in here. Uh, all right, it doesn't matter, okay. Perfect, so now let's go back to the application and see what, what is it saying. So in this sample, you can configure the audience in a couple of ways. Under this directory, you're gonna find this auth 0 config.json example or auth 0 config.json. All right, let's go back to my um, Visual Studio code and let's, let's go to the auth 0 config.json or auth config.json. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in there just to specify that that's the API I wanna access. 
this is going to restart. And then once I go back to my application, I just accept this consent. And as you can see now, I can um, access that external API, right? Now, so this API is secured by using a JWT. So pretty much the API receives a JWT and uh, verifies where, where is this coming from. Uh, and if it's all good, it's signed, properly signed, it's all good. So we give you access to that particular API. And the way we can see that is just ping the API, your access token was successfully validated. And then if I go back to my API server, you can see that we have a middleware in here, right? That is doing that job check uh, per se, right? So we're getting the access token and this middleware is in charge of um, validating that token that is coming in the request in the authorization header, right? So that's pretty much what it's doing. And if it's all valid, we just go ahead and throw this message. Right. So what I'm going to do is to number one, update this UI in here. Why is that? Because now I'm going to include another button to call an API, right? Based on a role of a, of a, um, a role of, of a particular user. I'm going to assign a role to a user. And then uh, if this user has this role, they can uh, call this API. So I'm just going to write that in a div, uh, here we go. Yeah, that's uh, that's totally fine. And then I'm just gonna paste this in here. And then what I'm gonna do is just to copy paste this in here. Let me just get rid of this uh, for a moment so you have more visibility as to what I'm doing. Uh, here, I'm gonna call this ping protected API, right? And this is gonna be ping protected API with roles. As simple as that. As you can see, this API or this button is calling this function called call API. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste that and call it call API with roles. All right. So I need to go ahead and create that one. Here's the function. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, collapse this, copy, paste, uh, expand this again. And then I'm just going to go call this um, call API with roles. And then what this is doing is to um, get the token. Uh, and just for context, this um, a project is using a hook, right? Uh, it's using the React SDK that comes with a hook called use auth zero. And within that hook, you can find these are different methods, such as get access token with pop-up, get access token silently, right? So that pretty much makes the, the process of getting the token from the authorization server easier for you, right? So once you get the token, you send that to the uh, as the authorization header as a bearer token, and then you call. In this case, we're gonna be calling uh, my roles API that I need to create later on, right? Call API with roles. Let me check that everything is in here. Yeah, that's good. Let me save that. And last but not least, the message is being shown as a highlight in here. So since um, I'm updating the state in here. I just want to show uh, whatever is in the state. So I'm just gonna get rid of this JSON string by, and uh, yeah, just show that message, state parameter, API message, bang, that's it. So that should do. So once I call my protected API with roles, uh, yeah, that fails. And uh, why does that fail? Uh, let me see here, child project keys. Ah, okay, I understand why. So now if we go back to my API server, you, you see that we are responding with a message. So I missed that, so my apologies. So message, and that should be it. And another thing I forgot that I noticed is the fact that I'm not calling this function. So call API with roles. Uh, yeah, I'm calling the function, perfect, happy days. All right, so let's go back to my uh, application, being protected API, you result your access token was successfully validated, but if I click on this one, nothing's gonna happen because I haven't created the route in my server. So let's go ahead and create that route on the server. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste this in here, call this roles and, uh, oops, uh, roles. Make sure that that's the same name in here in this call. External roles, yeah, perfect. 
And what I'm gonna do is to just to check the job, and then I'm gonna change this message just for um, um, for more visibility. You have um, called uh, the protected API, right? Just gonna go ahead and copy this message and paste it in here. And I'm gonna call this uh, with roles just to differentiate. Once I save that, the server has restarted. And then um, once I ping this, perfect, happy days. You have called the protected API with roles. You have called the protected API, cool. Now, the next step will be uh, enabling role-based access control. So just for context, guys, what is role-based access control? So. RBAC refers to the idea of assigning permissions to users based on the role within an organization. You then assign one or more roles to each user and one or more permissions to each role, right? So just to give you an example, if you are using RBAC to control access for an HR application, you could give HR managers a role that allows them to update employee details while other employees will be able to view only their own details. So in my case, just to give you a perfect example, so what I'm gonna do is this user, I'm gonna make this user an admin, and this admin can call this um, protected API, right? Based on their roles and their permissions and stuff like that. And any other user can't really uh, talk to this API at all. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do today. So in order to create or to enable role-based access control with uh, Alt-0, yeah, you need to, define a set of permissions at the API level. And the way we do that is to go to my API, which I have open here already, and there's a tab called permissions, right? So let's let's go ahead and create some permissions. I'm gonna create read uh, messages, for example. This will give you ability to read all your messages. Perfect. The other one will be read appointments, appointments. Right? You can read all your appointments. Right? I'm gonna click on add. And with that out of the way, now since I have a set of permissions, now I need to define a role and assign these permissions to that role, right? So the way you do that in Note0 is go to user management, click on roles, and then create a new role. And I'm gonna call this role admin. Um, Okay. Admin access, let's call this like that just to make it simple. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. And then when I, once I click on permissions and I click on add permissions, Alt3 is gonna ask me, great, so what API do you want this, um, uh, do you want these permissions to be coming from? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and select my API and then I just want the read messages permissions to be attached to this particular role. No worries, let's do that. And uh, I assign this permission, right? Now, another thing I forgot to mention is that you need to enable RBAC at the API level as well. And the way you do that is to go back to your API, go and uh, to your settings tab. And if you scroll down, there's a section here called enable RBAC, right? If this setting is enabled, RBAC authorization policies will be enforced for this API, right? Another additional thing I would like to do is to add the permissions in the access token. So that's gonna add, if this setting is enabled, permissions claim will be added to the access token, as simple as that. So now that I have that enabled, I'm gonna click on saving here, uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, all good. What I'm gonna do is to go to the role and assign, a, assign that role to a user, to the only user I have created, which is myself, assign, right? And then what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and log out. And quickly, I'm gonna show you the inspectoring here. This shooting, uh, okay, sorry about that. All right, cool, inspectoring here, inspect. And I'm gonna show you the network tab just for you to see what's happening. Just gonna type my email. Back. I'm gonna get rid of this, a bit annoying. Back. Continue. And now you can see here uh, the 
access token, right? So you can see copy value, and let's go ahead and use uh, jot.io to see what's inside that token. As you can see in here, I have the permissions uh, claim now attached to the to the access token, and since I have a role um, attached as well to this particular user, this user has been granted these particular permissions. All right, so that's uh, that's how you do that. And now, how can I and how can I protect my API now that I have permissions and RBAC enabled um, using a role, right? So let's go ahead and see how can I do that. So for that, there's a library called Express Jot Authorization, like this one in here, right? So that's literally what it does is to validate a Jot scope to authorize access to an endpoint, right? So let's go ahead and install that. Let me just copy this, I think it's easier. Uh, go back to my application in here. I'm gonna stop this for a moment and install that. Should be installed now. Okay, perfect. Let's run my application one more time. Excellent. All right. So the first thing naturally uh, is to you know require that uh, dependency. Of course, but you just copy it from here. Um, bang, I'm just gonna do this like that. I'm just gonna say const for consistency. And that's it, I'm gonna be calling this uh, job the authorization. Now, pretty much as this library we're using here to uh, validate the job that is coming as part of the author uh, authentication or authorization request in the header, we need to create a middleware, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a middleware in here. And I'm gonna call it uh, check permissions because that's exactly what we wanna do. So const check permissions, right? And that's gonna use uh, job authorization. And then what you need to pass to that um, is the scopes you want to validate right in in in, uh, in that request so i want to validate only read messages right and after that you're going to go ahead and you have different options in here so just for context the option i'm going to be using is this option you can find in here custom scope key so the property name to check for the actual scope by default permissions are checked against user.scope but you can change it to be user that my custom scope key with this option, right? So remember, since I'm including the permissions claim in my access token, so that's the custom scope I want to be checking, right? So the permissions, whatever is inside permissions in this claim. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let me just uh, copy this. Uh, oops, copy, no cut, here we go. And then I'm just gonna, Put it here uh, like this and then let me just go back to my application and go here and copy this custom scope key back right? and that's pretty much it right so once i have that middleware that is uh, actually doing that i'm gonna save this and then i'm gonna call this uh, middleware in here in the roles um endpoint right so that's pretty much it so what i'm gonna do is to disable the role for that particular user well first of all let's let's check what happens uh if this user attempts to um call that api since this user is an admin right and already has the permission to read messages so once i ping protected api with roles i can see that i have passed that um uh, assessment in there, right? But let's go ahead and remove this user from the admin role and see what happens. So once uh, I log out and I need to authenticate again to get a new access token, right? So let's do that one more time. Got a new access token. Once I click on external API, being protected, I can see that I am now getting an error in here saying insufficient scope and just in, why is that because obviously my access token doesn't have the scopes required to call this api 
and this is based on a role since this user is admin that has the the scope attached of reading messages uh, and this user doesn't have it so i can't really call the api so that's how you secure an api using a uh, role-based access control and just to make sure that i'm tracking everything that i'm doing and not lose my train of thought let me just um make sure that this is crossed out right and in addition to that, now let's talk about actions, right? Because that's the title of this uh, of this whole presentation. So, what are actions? Let me just uh, go back in here, and actually, this explains what what is actions uh, better than I can explain it, right? So, you might heard you might have heard about rules and hooks and you know which are like our main extensibility points, right? Or you might not, but literally, actions provides a unified view across secure, tenant-specific, self-contained functions that allow you to customize the behavior of Auth0, right? Each action is bound to a specific triggering event on the Auth0 platform, which executes custom code when that event is produced at runtime. What does that mean? So let me just go back to my diagramming here. So as you can see, we've seen this application making the request to universal login, capture the credentials, authenticate this user that is living in this uh, user data store. And then in this section, right, is where all the actions are gonna be executed. And with actions, you can achieve different things. You can you know, redirect the user onto an external page, maybe to capture extra information about that user. And then you go back to the actions pipeline in here, right? Or maybe you can you know, enrich the ID and access token with extra profile information about the particular user. Or maybe you can, you know, trigger a second factor of authentication based on a logical condition that you have defined yourself. So that's the extensible part of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the platform, right? So you can create your own things and trigger your own things based on your own things, right? So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing now. So now, um, sorry, wrong, wrong thing. So now what I wanna do is to only show, right? this tab in here external api for admin users right and for that i'm gonna be injecting the role of this particular user in the id token so that at, so that at the application level i can see okay so is this guy an admin yes great show it otherwise don't show it you, you can't really call an external api let's go back to my old serial dashboard and see how can we do that so if i click on actions in here we have two things flows and library so if we click, click on flows, as mentioned here before, executes custom code when that event is produced and runtime. So these are the different events that, um, that these actions are gonna execute in. So in the login, machine to machine, maybe a post change password, maybe sending a phone message, maybe you wanna bring your own SMS provider. So this is when this action is gonna trigger. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be talking about the login for now. No, I don't want to start the tour. I already know. <laughs> but for your uh, own reference, we do have a tour that you know walks you through the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on custom action. This is a really nice representation as to how the you know authentication flow goes. Create an action, and I'm going to call this add role claim to ID token. Create. And now Auth0 is giving me a whole IDE for me to actually, you know, uh, be hands on the keyboard and just write my own logical conditions, right? Write my own business. The cool thing about this editor in here is the fact that now you have IntelliSense included in here, right? Which is pretty cool in my opinion. So you go authorization and you can have access and you can have visibility as to what, what exactly you're using. Same for the API object. So how do I eat this? So, okay, let me just look into it. Another cool thing of, of the actions or, of, or this editor is the fact that you can add any module you need to add. Let's say you wanna make an HTTP request to an external service. No worries, so let's go ahead and use Axios because that's what I like. Create, and as simple as that, you just um, um, npm install Axios <laughs> in, in, in this uh, serverless function. That's pretty much what it is. You just need to require it. Just const axios like 
just the, the standard stuff and that you are ready to go you can make http requests right i'm going to delete that one and then also you can create your own secrets let's say you you have um things like configuration or maybe keys that you would like uh, Otero as well to use, but you don't really want to show it in the in the actions code, it, no, no worries. You can go ahead and create my secret and then uh, create the secret in here. Once you create it, then you can um, include the secret by calling the event secrets and then including the name of the um of the parameter right so that's it confirm and another cool thing is the fact that you have a whole testing environment in here so you can run that action real time and see the results real time right uh with that in mind as a developer i come across this function i'm like oh my god what i'm gonna do yeah i can write my 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 own business logic but i need a starting point i, I need a reference you can click on view samples in here and we have the most common use cases we see out there right so in this case what i would like to do is to inject the the roles in the in the tokens so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and copy this just for simplicity and uh, uh you need to create a namespace because it's gonna be a namespace claim in the access token and then if we have an authorization if we have a role right attached to that particular request we validate that if we have that so then we go i'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and look for the role of that particular user and set it as a custom claim in the ID token. That's pretty much what it is. You're gonna go ahead and deploy, right? And then just to show you how does this work as well, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And you can see the result in here. So this is the name of the extra claim. So now let's see that in action, no pun intended. So let's go and log out and log in again. and see what the access token brings the id token so i have my token in here i have my id token copy to value and as you can see in here um this, uh, did i copy the wrong one uh, id token uh this one no that should be that should be it all right it's ah you know what rookie mistake <laughs> all right let's go back to my to my actions um screening here obviously this action is not going to run because i haven't added the action to the flow right so let's go ahead and add that to the flow and try that one more time so let's go ahead and click on apply and log out login again oops wrong one let's do this one okay continue and once i get the token let's see what happens here we go so we have our custom claim as uh, since remember i removed this user uh, from the from the role of admin so that's why i don't have any roles attached to this particular user right so now what i want to do is to since this user doesn't have uh any role attached it's not an admin that's pretty much what it means i'm gonna go ahead and hide this external api right and the way i can do that is by going back to my code right and there's a nav bar in here the first thing i want to do is to use effects because i want to check the role uh, when this component initializes right i have a code in here just for simplicity um just gonna copy paste that in here just to save a little bit more time so you're gonna go ahead and paste this in here and then i'm gonna explain what's happening so this use effect obviously is depending on, on whether the user is authenticated and this method is included within the hook that the react sdk is giving you right so we're checking if the user is authenticated go ahead and check the role we need to create this function though okay let's go ahead and create it so i have it here and uh, once i paste this in here pretty much what this is doing is um you know pretty much as the east authenticated method so this hook has a method called get id token claims right so pretty self-explanatory so if you have an id token just give me the claims that uh, are in that particular token i'm calling that role right and then i'm um 
what I need to do as well, that I forgot to do this. So let's go ahead and create another site parameter in here. And I'm gonna call it is admin. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna say is admin, right? And not default state. So set is admin. So if the role exists and the role uh, is admin, so obviously I need to put here the, uh, the name of the, of the client per se. See if that role um, array includes admin, so then is admin, otherwise it's, it's not admin, as simple as that, right? So once I have that in place, what I can do is since I have this external API in here, this is checking only if it's authenticated or not. So I'm gonna check as well if it's an admin too, right? And then if I go back to my application, voila, this disappears. And now let's go ahead and attach the admin role to that user and see what happens. So users, as add user, John, assign. And guess what? We need to authenticate again. Bang. Let's uh, go ahead. I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, here. Uh, let's get rid of this and bang. External API. Happy days. Uh, so now we have seen how we can enrich the access token with extra claims. In this case, I'm enriching the token with a role um, that that user has attached as well. And based on that, I can make my decisions at the application as to what to show and what not to show, depending on the role of the user, which is uh, pretty cool. So we have this out of the way already. So token enrichment, let me just cross this up. And now, we are going to enable the no code actions finally. Let's talk about no code actions. What are they? So, no code actions. So, um, uh, actions trigger. So, no code actions. I have something here actually explaining this. Here we go. Just for you to have more visibility. So, action integrations, uh, as we call it, or no code actions, are as our new zero code layer offers an easy experience to extend Auth0 with partner built innovations with no coding required, right? So that means now you can implement key integrations such as identity verification on consent management. Based on this diagram in here, imagine your application is, let's say, a, a crypto application, right? And you need to go through a KYC process. So remember when I told you that with an action, you can redirect the user onto an external page. So now you have integrations out of the box from KYC providers or partners of Auth0 that, you know, give you these capabilities. And all you need to do is to, you know, set some parameters that they ask for, and then the action is gonna make sure that you get redirected, you get um, um, identified and, and, and all the criteria has been passed, and then you can come back to the, to the uh, actions pipeline and continue to access your resources, right? So that's the cool thing about this. And how am I gonna show you this today? Like pretty much, let's go to um, actions in here and show you the libraries, the library of already existing actions. So we have installed in here, we have nothing, so add actions. So these are all out of the box uh, integrations that you can um, you can find in here. As you can see, we have an integration with OneTrust in case you want to do some sort of consent management, create your own consent screens and integrate this world zero, you can use this one. Or for example, we also have um, an action integration uh, with um, with KYC um, and providers out there. If if you want to see all the integrations we have, we also have a marketplace that you can have a look into, and then you have all the integrations available in there. Right? There's so many I can't really recall uh, what what are they. So as you can see here, we have constant management, identity proofing. And we have also on, on FIDO, which is uh, an amazing service as well. But anyway, I digress. So today I'm gonna be using Amazon SNS, right? Why am I gonna be using Amazon SNS? Let me explain a little bit. So one of the items I have in this list is to enable contextual MFA, right? And in, I wanna enable contextual MFA and I wanna send SMS to a particular user with an OTP code that they can provide as a second factor of authentication, okay? But I wanna be using um, Amazon SNS or AWS SNS as my SMS provider. So let's go ahead and click uh, on Amazon uh, SNS. 
And then once you click on the installation tab, you can see the, um, the different things you need to do in order to create this integration. So obviously you need to have um, your SNS um, in here available, as you can see in here. Uh, I have mine already. Let me just um, log in in here. Thing. And I'm gonna have to, well, anyway, it's not relevant, but the whole idea I want to show you is the fact that this integration is out of the box. All you need to do is to create a new user that has this role attached or this policy, Amazon SNS full access, and then you can go ahead and cl click on add integration. Once you click on add integration, you need to specify um, what region are you gonna be using. So in my case, I'm in Sydney, so Southeast uh, two and then uh, specify my uh, AWS access key for that particular user that has programmatic access, right? So, and has that uh, role attached as well, or that policy. So once I click on create, that's pretty much it, right? That, that That's the whole integration. And that's the whole magic of this. Like you don't need to take care of anything else on the optical side of things. You'll provide a few configuration settings and you are ready to go, right? So now, how can, how can I start using Amazon SNS as my SNS provider? So first of all, let's talk about security. Let's talk about multi-factor authentication. When it comes to multi-factor authentication, there are two decisions you need to make. What factor you want to enable? In my case, I'm gonna enable a phone message, right? So once I enable that factor in here, then you can specify uh, what delivery provider you wanna use. Uh, by default, we use Twilio and, and ourselves, but then you can use also your custom one, which is the one I'm gonna be using today. And choose the delivery method, SMS. And you know what? This is not allowing me to use that. You know why? Because again, rookie mistake, I forgot to add the action to the flow. So just bearing that in mind, don't make the mistake as well. So send phone message, that's the event I wanna uh, trigger this action. Uh, so Amazon SNS version one, apply, happy days. That's it, that's online. Then I go back to security, multi-factor authentication. And I go ahead and enable phone message, which is already enabled. But now when I select custom, you can see that now you have the enrollment template. This is your verification code and also the OTP, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And now the second decision you need to make when activating multi-factor is when do you want to trigger an MFA factor? So never using adaptive MFA. So literally means like let Otero make the decision based on different signals like the IP reputation, whether it's a new device or not, whether it's an impossible travel request, I'm logging in from Sydney now and 10 minutes later, I'm in Munich. That's something we flag and uh, as a, a potential security risk. So we can trigger MFA in here. So for today, I'm gonna be using always, pretty self-explanatory and click on save, right? So with this configuration out of the way, so I can go back to my application, click on log out, log in. I'm gonna be using my uh, user again. Mm -hmm. Bang, bang, get rid of this. And as you can see now, um, the, also the universal login has MFA enrollment and MFA pages out of the box. So you don't have to build your own ones, right? So it's asking me, okay, cool. You don't have any phone enrolled. Can you please give me your phone to enroll it? Cool, no worries, let's do that. Cool, I got this phone now. Once I click on next, I should be receiving a text message very soon, hopefully, if the integration is correct. Here we go, happy days. I got my integration correctly, so 403. 472, that's the code. And as simple as that, we have enabled multi-factor authentication um, just with a simple clicks, right? And I have also brought my own SMS provider, which as you can see was um, AWS uh, SNS, right? So I'm just conscious of time. I know I think uh, we have, what? Uh, Five minutes, actually, 150, 1250, yeah, five minutes. So look, another thing I wanted to show you is um, the fact that with the custom actions I was talking about, you can also, uh, based on the role of a user, right, you can trigger a factor of authentication or not. So what I was gonna show you, but 
Unfortunately, I wanna open up for Q Q&A now. What you can do is based on whether the user is admin or not, if it's admin, don't trigger MFA. If it's someone else, you can trigger MFA. But the way you can do that, just to quickly, um, let's say, um, blah, blah, blah. let's call this contextual MFA, right? Very quickly. And maybe you can take it as homework and you can try it yourself, uh, which is pretty fun. So let's go view examples in here. And then there's a com you can use a combination of um, this one, uh, rules to access tokens. So you know now that the event authorization has the roles inside, if a user has a uh, role attached. And also you have an enforced custom MFA policy here. And this is how you trigger the second factor of authentication based on the role of the user. So if the user is admin, go ahead and don't trigger MFA. If the user is different than admin, go ahead and trigger a second factor of authentication. And uh, that's it from me, guys. Hopefully uh, this was helpful and um, try to cover as much as I could. So here are my details. Feel free to reach out to me directly by email or LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, with that in mind, we can open for Q&A. Any questions, guys? <laughs> um, Chuck it in the chat. So I can just assume that, yeah, that was awesome, JC. Thank you very much. You explained so well. <laughs> Brett, any thoughts? Yeah, no worries, man. Thank you for joining. And guys, look, um, again, if you have any questions, uh, we can take it offline. If you feel like Auth0 is a good fit for what you're doing today, if you have any bespoke apps and let's say you're going into a microservices architecture or something like that, look, we're here to help, right? So I would like to hear your use case and, and see how can we solve your challenges, right? Thank you, thank you, Sima. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Look, and there's an, another thing, um, now on that point, here our friend Ben is outlining this table with all the difference in between rules and hooks and actions. So before you had rules, hooks, but now only you have actions. So you are getting rid of these two and you can actually enable all of this in one single place, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Another thing that is really cool is the fact that we're using Monaco, right? VS Code Editor. And now you have all these features, IntelliSense, autocomplete, secret management. That's just makes things super easy. And also you can enable more than, you know, 1 million plus modules, NPM modules, right? Like if it's available in the NPM ecosystem, you can, you can require that, which is, which is pretty useful in my opinion, but obviously that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, well, guys, we have three minutes. Any other comments, feedback? Um, questions I would like to have some hands-on experience is there any documentation I can follow absolutely absolutely so all the one of the things that um, we are very proud of is the documentation we have so I will encourage you to go to odd0.com.blog and you have endless examples with endless tech technologies out there right you can we have uh, flutter um integrations we have uh, let's say you're using react with typescript uh you we have that ruby on rails blocks or anything that you can imagine and also we have a youtube channel that you can um that you can go and watch all these videos as well so for example just to give you an example in here uh let me just bring this in we have this one in here so we have a YouTube channel as well that you can follow. And we have all endless, you know, um, examples, live examples, and also workshops that you can follow on your own time. So hopefully that's helpful for you, Sima. And uh, well, we have one minute. I think that's it for me, guys. I'll leave you for you to, you know, join other sessions. And thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. See you guys.